written and directed by Dan Levy, Good Grief starring Levy, Ruth Negga and Himesh Patel in the lead roles is finally released on Netflix. As the comedy drama releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview, talk about the ending and discuss some details of the film so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we'll be discussing essential plot points and character details from the film. But if you're done watching it already, let's dive straight into the video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on to the basic plot. In Good Grief, we meet Mark and Oliver, the perfect couple who throw extravagant Christmas parties. Oliver was an acclaimed writer and Mark was a painter who had begun illustrating children's books and book covers. Oliver's larger-than-life personality made him a crowd favorite, and Mark simply adored his man. He was the very example of the perfect partner, and for 15 years, Mark had no reason to complain. Before leaving for Paris, Oliver entertained the party guests and led the customary carol rehearsal. He handed Mark a red envelope and promised to see each other again soon. Mark didn't know it would be the last time he would see Oliver, and the long talk they were supposed to have after the vacation never happened. Mark lost Oliver in an accident and it took him months to get used to the idea of his husband no longer being by his side. His best friend Sophie and Thomas helped him heal. They stayed by his side throughout and encouraged him to leave his home and move on with his life. The persistent pain did not go away even though it did for months. And eventually, it had been a year since the accident. Mark couldn't open the Christmas card Oliver had given him, but he thought the time had come. Maybe Mark was expecting some sort of love letters that would break his heart after reading it, but instead, it was a confession. And that he wanted to explore their relationship. Oliver wanted to introduce the idea to Mark before discussing the matter in person. Mark did not expect such a turn of events. Suddenly, he didn't know if it was sadness or anger he felt. He had so many questions in his mind, but the only person who could have answered them was now gone. Getting over Oliver has become much more complicated than it was. Mark had to find forgiveness in his heart and accept everything about the person Oliver was. Mark joined his friends at the experimental art party they were at and his eyes met Theo. He was a French man who immediately showed interest in Mark. Theo had a sense of authenticity that Mark appreciated, but flirting with a stranger wasn't something he was ready for. He had to deal with the turmoil he was experiencing inside, and although they exchanged numbers, he didn't contact Theo. Mark met Imalda, he is an Oliver's financial advisor, to discuss the steps to take after the publishing house demanded a significant sum of money back from the advance they had paid Oliver for the completion of the next novel. While discussing how to reduce costs, Imalda mentioned a pied d'etre in Paris that had been on a lease since December last year. Mark was completely unaware of the property she had mentioned and realized that this was the place Oliver was buying for the other man he had mentioned in the letter. Mark had a breakdown. He discovered heartbreaking truths after his partner's death and had to face them while he mourned his loss. He spent a year of his life mourning over Oliver's death, and he wondered if it was all a mistake. He couldn't help but reconsider the relationship and the values they shared. He began to doubt Oliver's love for him and everything seemed infinitely more difficult. Before ending the lease on the Parisian apartment, Mark decided to visit it with Sophie and Thomas. He did not dare to do it alone and thought a trip to Paris would be a pleasure for his friends. Sophie, who recently separated, accepted the proposal without hesitation and Thomas did not hesitate to accept it as well. It was clear that Thomas had a thing for Mark. They dated a year 15 years ago and have been friends ever since. Thomas was looking for a partner and maybe after Oliver's death, he thought they could give each other another chance. Mark didn't have the strength to admit the truth to his friends and chose to indulge their belief that this apartment belonged to him and Oliver. Mark found more evidence of Oliver's alternate life when he entered his bedroom. He left a Christmas present for his partner, Luca, and this broke Mark even more. Later, he went to the shop where Oliver received the gift and was surprised to find that Oliver frequented the shop when he was in Paris. He had also heard that the young boy sometimes accompanied Oliver to the store. Mark knew that one day he would have to face reality, but everything came too suddenly. Sophie chose not to discuss her breakup with her friends, but she was trying to have fun. She swiped right with a man on a dating app and he agreed to bring his friends. Mark missed Oliver terribly at dinner. He was drunk and that didn't help his case. He impulsively contacted Theo and to his surprise, the Frenchman was waiting for him outside the karaoke room. Thomas was not very happy with Mark's sudden decision to leave and Mark and Theo's immediately clicking with one another. 
After arriving in Paris, Mark felt exceptionally lonely and enjoyed Theo's company. His frankness impressed Mark and their conversation gave him a sense of clarity. Mark admitted after his mother's death, he focused entirely on his marriage to cope with the loss of her. He didn't give himself the time to process her absence and didn't do anything to remind him of her. Now he realized that all he had ever wanted was the memory of her and that he would have to endure the pain instead of finding a way out. He thought that he too was following the same path for Oliver. During his confession in good grief, we learned that Mark and Oliver had an open marriage, but Mark wasn't entirely open to the idea. Instead of admitting his true feelings to him, he chose to agree with Oliver because he was afraid of losing him. Mark realized that he was finding it so difficult to deal with the pain that it was turning into anger instead. Theo advises him to continue painting to express his feeling through art. The two visited the Claude Monet Museum that evening and shared a kiss in what Theo described as the house of loss. When Mark woke up in the morning, he found a very angry Thomas and an upset Sophie. After a night of drinking and drugs, Sophie was found sleeping at the bus station and arrested by police. Thomas had to deal with the whole situation and was extremely frustrated. He blamed Mark for not being there to help him and casually leaving him alone. Later, during the ferry's wheel ride, Thomas admitted his feeling for Mark. He was aware that Mark didn't feel the same about him and couldn't help but think that. In the end, he was always the one no one fell in love with. He was looking for a partner all his life, but none of the people he met considered him the right one. Their entire lives were a mess. And while they would never be perfect, Thomas believed that they should at least try to be better. Sophie admitted that it was Terence who broke up with her. He wanted to marry her, but she could never give him that assurance. She was always looking for the best solution, not realizing how important it is to have someone willing to go through the worst days together. One way or another, the three friends learned the life lesson from the trip to Paris. Back to London, Mark decides to sell Oliver's house and spend some time alone painting. Instead of running away from sadness, he wanted to take the time to appreciate Oliver through his art. After the realization hit Sophie, she and Terence decided to give the relationship another try. During the finale of Good Grief, Mark finally forgave Oliver for the secret he had kept and mourned the loss of his partner through time and art. Thomas arrived at Mark's art show with his friend. It seems that he has finally found someone willing to hold his hand even in the worst circumstances. Taking a break, Thomas and Mark's relationship improved and they were best friends again. Sophie and Terence got back together and she had a ring on her finger. After the trip to Paris, she realized that how important it was to focus on the relationship she was in, instead of looking for the best option. In addition to Oliver's painting, Mark's friends were also her subjects. During her lost journey, she felt closer to her emotions than before. In modern times, we tend to keep busy rather than process our emotions. Mark's journey in good grief taught him to express his feelings and move forward with them instead of running away, because he understood that there was no escape. Sophie and Thomas's problems are also quite relevant. One was desperate for stability at a time when affairs were more valued, and Sophie struggled to be satisfied even though she knew she was happy in the relationship. The world taught her to never settle and always look for a better option. By doing so, she was about to jeopardize the beautiful relationship she had. And the film ends on a moderately happy note. Despite its best intentions, Good Grief feels boring and tedious. Levy is a natural performer, but there is no hiding the script's self-congratulatory tactics, which leave no room for intrigue or emotional wear. The worst of it all rubs off on the supporting cast, particularly the talented Ruth Necker, who takes on the thankless role of an alcoholic girlfriend who can't keep herself together. With Himesh Patel, these two friends only serve to sympathize with Mark and his melancholy. When the heated argument sets the big wheel on the palace de la Concorde in motion, interest is already lost and Emma Conn in appearance leads nowhere. Good Grief really had nothing to add or say to what already exists. However, you will like this film if you're a sucker for a moody, melancholic film. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching the video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Good Grief on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinemas and series. See you at the next one and for the time being, we are signing off. Au revoir and I'll be back.